my clothes in my minivan. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was almost finished folding all of my clothes and the attendant came by with a shop bag <laughs> and was gonna vacuum behind some of the washers that were close to me. Well, I know how shop back works. It blows out the other end a whole lot of dust. So I grabbed up all of my clothes and threw them in the basket and brought them out here and threw them back here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you don't want to clean clothes and then bam, you know, um, have it all dusty. So I'm going to put these away. Just, I'm going to put my towels away and I probably won't show every little thing. Why would you want to watch all of that? But I will mention... I'll put my clothes away. That'll be maybe a little more interesting. Oh boy, look how full everything is. I gotta get rid of some of these clothes. But I'm gonna be heading south and I know that it's gonna be warmer down there. I can't put everything away. Oh my gosh. Well, I think what I'm gonna do then is just go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of them Fold them up and put them in the bags that I got in the back. I've shown you all of that, right? Get my flower over here. Well, I was going to go to the gym today. I go every morning. But <laughs> what happened was while I was camping, I whacked my right knee. Um, getting inside the um <laughs> it's a big cement you've seen them out there by the grand canyon it's a huge cement thick cement picnic table and i was gonna put my foot through to sit down and eat lunch and i whacked the inside of my knee cap on the inside of my right i mean i went ah. yeah almost screamed it was so painful well <laughs> Then the next day I started cleaning my van, right? Well, I think I stressed it out so much by not just sitting, sitting. but when you're camping, why do you just want to sit? I barely could walk, so I've been kind of nursing my knee, my right knee. But I still haven't been able to get on the treadmill, but there's so many other things that I can do at the gym. And you know what? I just wasn't feeling it. You know, when I don't feel it, when I'm thinking, huh? And I do work out pretty hard. Not hard, but I'm very consistent with it. Put my neck gaiters away. Arm gaiters. Boy, there's certain days where, you know what? I just don't feel it. And it's so those days, I don't push it. Why push it? Because tomorrow I will be back in form again. And if I'm not, well, that's okay because I know I will. I know that I have made exercising a very important, vital part of my life. I don't feel good, you know, if I don't do that. I'll show you this. This is a nightcap. <laughs> this is my nightcap. I bought this, it also has, I can kind of pull it a little bit to really, I put all my hair under it and there, it's satin, it said it was silk, but it's not, it's satin, satin underneath to protect my hair while I'm sleeping. Because if, and then what I did, I also got, you see on when I fold them, I have satin um, pillowcases and a satin sheet, these are matching. Yeah, um, I tried to find silk. Silk is uber hard to find. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it just is so hard to find. So um, I had to just use satin, but I wear this every night. I put my hair under it and I'm trying to protect my hair, yeah. So I'll put this away. wash my socks. I really like these. Wow, these are super in the morning. And then when winter really comes, I'll be able to wear these at night too. Yeah.
and a washed a pair of shoes. I take the sole out and wash that and, and I just, I don't take all of the shoestrings out anymore. I just kind of pull them. Can you see the wind here? It's going to be up to late, later on this afternoon, 25, 30 miles an hour. But I've got an exciting, exciting afternoon. You'll find out why. Yeah, in just a few minutes. So my knee is to go. I whacked it right here. I was sitting down and I went to put this leg in. And it, I mean, it because I went full force. Um, I hurt a tendon. The, it, it, it connects because I, I have an app that I can look at to see exactly what it was. It was a tendon. It connects bone to muscle. And it just goes, and it connects it all. There's a muscle that goes all the way up here. So, yeah. And it did, it affected this side too. No one of you said that you, <laughs> you said, I love to see feet. I do too. I'm not sure why. I don't have a fetish of feet. No, but I do. If somebody has sandals on, I look at their feet. And it's like, hmm, those are interesting. Aren't feet interesting looking? They're not funny looking. They're interesting. Feet are interesting. And everybody has a different toe. It's amazing. I mean, our fingers are kind of the same, but when it comes to toes, oh my gosh. Like this toe, the second toe is a little bit longer than the rest of my rest of my toes. Can you see that? Yeah. Little bit. Now I'll tell you when I had ballet, these are like real bum. Yeah. I don't know why I'm telling you. When I when I was in ballet, what happened was on toe shoes, it it permanently um, kind of made a line down my, my toe. I think because it was bigger and it just permanently left a line down. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Have you ever seen uh, uh, dancers in toe shoes? Have you seen their feet? Oh my gosh. A ballet dancers, their feet are messed up. I'm so glad my feet didn't get messed up. But um, I need a pedicure again. I <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, and I do have a little bit of a bunion right there. Maybe from every once in a while wearing a shoe when I was younger that kind of went in instead of, I like to have nice rounded. But I don't have that going on where that this toe like goes over. Have you seen those? Um, anybody like models, a lot of models that wear the stilettos all the time. This foot is permanent. The bone is permanently over. <laughs> it goes over. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's my feet. Okay. <laughs> I love, I love feet. I find them. I don't have a fetish for them. It's not bad. I mean, they don't like cause any, Ooh, I get all excited, but I'm just fascinated by different shapes and sizes of toes and they all do something different the toes i've seen toes where the little toe is permanently over i've seen that like the little pinky toe it just goes over and it lays on top and i think i guess it doesn't hurt because it's been that way a long time and i don't know why it would be like like that it probably happened in the womb right i guess and then, um, <laughs> let's see, what are some other toes? There are some toes that literally just, they're, they're totally, um, they just go across. You know, they're all even, even Steven. That's all even. And that's always a good look like for um, foot models, toe models, you know, for, um, you know, they got their toes, their um, nails all painted up and everything. Yeah, you want them to be kind of like go all the way you know, like even a little bit. I mean, you want to go up, but a little bit even. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm talking about this. I just, just jibber jabber. But I got some clothes to put away, so I better quit talking about toes. <laughs> Let me know in comments if you're kind of the same way. If somebody has um, their feet out, they have flip-flops or sandals. My eyes are like... <laughs> I look, I just kind of study them. 
yeah. And just like, oh, that's interesting looking. <laughs> Little secrets I'm telling you, okay? So if you're around me and you don't want me to look at your toes, you better put some socks or shoes on, okay? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Time for a hotel stay, a reset, a pampering session, pedicure, manicure, wash my hair, scrub myself down, soak in a bathtub for hours if I want to. I want to get comfortable. Turn down the air conditioner just a little bit. Kind of cool it down. Check what's on TV. Probably not too much. I want to return this carrier. Luggage carrier. I like to unpack right away, kind of get comfortable, because I'm only going to be here for less than 24 hours, so I kind of want to get in that bathtub. But I did look online, and I found some safety tips for living in a hotel that I want to share with you. And you'll see as you watch this that a lot of them I just don't do, <laughs> but I'll start doing them. So let's get started with that. No matter how safe your hotel is, someone has a key to your room. Here are the hotel safety tips you need to know. I mean, travel can be exciting. And especially for me, I live in my minivan most of the time, so it's really exciting to get into a place, a soft bed, and my main thing is a bathroom, and I get to do um, all of the pampering that I want to do as a female. But my hotel room can leave something to be desired when it comes to safety and security. I mean, sure, this hotel room door lock and deadbolt and possibly a security chain, U-bar lock or security latch for extra security, they're there. But all of these security features are mass produced and pretty easy to circumvent, either physically or via sophisticated tools, according to this article I've been reading. Hotel doors are designed to be relatively easy to open, both for staff access needs and evacuation needs. And we really have no idea how much crime happens at hotels because most hotel chains work very, very hard to keep the police out of their hotels. Well, here we go with the tips. Tip one, inspect. The first thing I can do to increase my safety in a hotel room is to check it out before I even unpack, which I sort of did. I walked in, it's not a large room. So I walked in and I looked around and I turned on the lights. But they go further and they say to prop open the door with your luggage so you have an unimpeded escape route just in case somebody's hiding around the bed when I walked over to turn on the lights. Also, inspect the room, check for anyone hiding in closets, under the bed, or behind curtains. It might sound paranoid, but the worst way to find out someone's hiding in there is when you're alone and unprepared. And like I said, I did this. Check the door locks. They're easy to bypass, yes, but if they don't work at all, you should request a new room. If your room has a balcony or a walkout with sliding doors, check the lots there as well. And you know what? I did that. Now check the peephole. I did not do that till later on in the evening. 
Make sure you have an unobstructed view of the area outside your door. Then cover the peephole with something. A post-it note works just fine or a piece of tape. I've never done that, but I will do that next time. Once I've checked the room, it's time for me to consider reinforcing my door security. Since I can't rely on hotel locks and since plenty of staff members have access to my room at all times anyways, I should take steps to secure my door on my own. How about a door wedge? These range from simple hunks of rubber to more sophisticated devices which, with built-in alarms, which I have one of those, so I need to find it and get it out. So they're easy to pack and easy to install. Now, a portable door lock. You can add a second or third lock to your door using a variety of devices. I'll have to look for these. You can also add something like a door lock locker or a deadbolt strap that prevents the deadbolt on your door from being turned, even if someone has the key. I'm gonna look for those. If you find any, leave in comments. Now, it says here, if I don't have these items on hand and I'm concerned, there's a couple hacks. A pair of clothes hangers from your room's closet can be used to jam the door handle. I've never done that, but I'll look for that on YouTube and see how to do that. And simply draping a towel over the door handle can prevent folks from using an under the door tool to gain access to my room. Wow. You know, a lot of these things I never thought of. I want to thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and go to minivanlee.com for products. I love you guys so much. I'm going to get ready to take my bath. Bye now.